मॉर्निंग एवरी वन रिस्पेक्टेड हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट फैकल्टी मेंबर प्रगति महाले मैम बिलेवेड स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी हैव प्रिविलेज ऑफ होस्टिंग एंड एक्सेप्शनल इंडिविजुअल जर्नी थ्रू द डायनेमिक वर्ल्ड ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी हैज बीन नथिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ इंस्पायर प्लीज वेलकम शेख मुस्कान we all have gathered here to honor one of our accomplished alumni a pass out of 2021 batch sheikh muskan she has achieved remarkable success and distinction in her career making us immensely proud to have her as a part of our esteemed institution legacy she is currently a product development lead at airbus she is into leads development of mobile application android and ios she plans builds launch and manage saas innovation she has blend technology skills with extensive agile and scrum experience a marketing orientation and analytical abilities to evolve product strategies she has a professional internship experience as software engineer intern at jp morgan chase and company in the period august 2020 to october 2020 and full stack developer intern at datamatica solution january 2020 to july 2020 sheikh muskan is a passionate it engineer with a strong drive for continuous learning and exploring new technologies her journey from software engineering intern to consultant is very inspiring some of her remarkable achievements are she was recognized as top engineer of india 2020 by economic times airbus faces 2022 Goldman Sachs and many others. So, without further ado, let us give a warm welcome to Sheikh Musa. Thank you. So, I please request uh, HOD ma'am to felicitate Musa. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Congratulations, thank you, Parvati. 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 Hello, uh, Muskan. Uh, we would like to know more about you and your experience in the college. So there are few questions that we have prepared for you. So first one is like, how do you feel to be back at the institute? It feels great. Uh, a lot has changed in the past two years that we were like a COVID batch. I was interning, like I said, so uh, I missed a considerable part of it. It's nice. I think it's way more cool. I think it, we are in par with the world that's changing. We are not very traditional. And I think I'm happy about it. And can you give us like small brief about the institute and how did your experience at institute can uh, contribute to your personal and professional? I think uh, the part that I love the most when I look back is we do academics, but I think we give a lot of importance to other activities. Uh, I don't think there are a lot of colleges that give a lot of importance to fests or like have interdepartmental events or whatsoever. And I agree in corporates, your uh, technical skills matter, but a lot of it is about the expectations that you get in terms of speaking, in terms of managing different things. I remember we used to like deal with a lot of people for sponsorships. Today, a lot of uh, our colleagues and um, my co-students are almost in marketing fields and different fields. So I think we're not restricted to our careers today because the institute is very. Yeah. Uh, another thing, how did your education and training at our college help you in your current job, and what skills that you learn uh, in college you still use in your career? Uh, I think uh, morning lectures, whether it was by Jamala sir or Pradeep Parul sir or whoever lecture we were supposed to be on time. I remember like no matter what you are. If it is Jamal sir's lecture, you have to like rush in rain and everything, so it's not as disciplined. Uh, never be late. And um, apart from that, whatever we learned in terms of our subject, in terms of our application skills, and in terms of uh, however we gave theory exams and things like that, uh, absorbing a lot of knowledge and putting it into applications is really helpful. Yeah. Jamal sir is such a punctual man. Okay, what do you think sets Our college, uh, AISSMS IOIT, apart from other institutions, uh, and what you would like to say this about this college that you learned here, and you wouldn't have learned in another institutions. I think ability to adapt to change is uh, 
very different in terms of uh, I remember like today we have departments that support big data and analytics but from our batch uh, after our departmental fest happened there was like a sponsor who then uh, took out to be uh, weekend lectures in terms of AI and big data so when other colleges wouldn't have even thought of this as a far-fetched technology we tried to bring it home uh, I remember IT department was like the first to like you know start all of this and we had like a minimum batch of 25 people coming every day in the morning 8 to 1 on the weekends after doing 5 days college so I think the ability to adapt to the change and to bring it home is really different. Uh, and we all know that it's very difficult to stay connected to the college so how did you manage to say stay connected? I think Pragati ma'am, she'll <laughs> always put on uh, messages or whatsoever and I think the way she conducts it, we don't feel like, like you know, I'm going to some other place to like deliver an interview or something like that, it is always like come back home yeah. and I think she just makes it so easy in terms of uh, arranging people's schedules, like, like I said, I, I don't stay in the city today because of work but she efficiently managed the week and everything, so I think thanks and to her. what about, you can give us some advice? We really need it. Uh, I think you should find to do what you love, but uh, arrange your technical skills accordingly. Mm -hmm. So, like, find one goal and try to go for it. Because today, I think in the world of automating everything and like the popular chat GP taking over, I think it's uh, very important to know your skill and make sure nobody can beat you at it. Yeah. Okay. As a profession you hold with diverse background, what did you? <clears throat> do to explore various industries and roles in your college days? To be very honest, I think apply, 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 explore options, don't keep yourself uh, restricted to anything. Uh, because, for example, the company that I work at right now is Airbus, it's an aircraft manufacturing company. For a lot of people, it would be like, what do software engineers have to do in such places? Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. if you look, I have been uh, working with uh, companies which were finance based and then EPL based, I think. It's, it's, it's our time to learn. It's all of our time to learn right now and uh, you shouldn't restrict yourselves to many things. I mean, go out there and explore. So basically the key is we should uh, just explore things until you get the one you are interested in. Yeah, and I don't think like you can settle and find one thing that keeps you grounded. So I think you should, you can like have a technology that you're concentrated in. But I think the way you apply it, like you know a recipe but you can use it in multiple ways. Yeah. So that is. Okay, so uh, uh, we have heard you have a strong presence in the tech industry. So how did you become interested in technology and its application? Basically, when did you develop the interest in this technologies and it, its application? To be very honest, uh, in the 8th standard, uh, I knew I wanted to be an engineer. So uh, I think it works out for a lot of people where after 12 they are like, oh, engineering can't get there. But for me, I knew I wanted to do it. However, the profession, like, I wanted to do aerospace and then it was if aerospace is not working, computer engineering. And I think for engineers, everybody who's inclined to the tech background, it is very important to have an algorithmic mind. Like even if you're solving a business problem, market problem, the way you look at things should be like an engineer. And I think that is what makes you technically inclined. Yeah, yeah. So you have been happy now as you have to be an aerospace engineer and you are at Airbus. Yeah, I think things fall in the way. Yeah. There may have been many challenges, right? You can share some. Uh, yeah, so I actually joined as a full stack developer. As we know, full stack does not restrict in technologies, it is everything back end, front end. And even in back end, front end, you don't get to choose, like, I will only work on React or I will only work and design frames. My internship helped me a lot, but uh, whenever I was uh, like getting on a new project, there was a lot of challenges in terms of learning technologies. Mm -hmm. I think that's where your engineering background comes because every semester we get a new range of subjects. We learn and I think uh, today people think that only having like a coding skill matters, but I do not think so. Your engineering really matters in terms of your ability to adapt, learn something in like a semester and really nail it in terms yeah. of all of your practical mm -hmm. exams, the theory exams. So, like when you go out in the industry today, it's so rapidly changing, you mm -hmm. can't choose one technology and stick to it. Yes. So, mm -hmm. if you can like choose to be a front-end developer, but then there's a plethora of technologies in front-end. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's been always a challenge and I think it's for everybody who wants to be a part of this world. That's great. Uh, your LinkedIn profile highlights many achievements throughout your life. So, 
Can you share any one accomplishment that you are very proud of in life? Uh, I think the first one that was uh, Economic Times uh, Top 100 Engineering Minds of India because I remember it was like a 25 step assessment process. It was all of the engineers from India who were competing. And I remember we had to like go for interviews in Bombay. And it was with the top CEOs of Kotak Mahindra Bank, Xiaomi, etc. And uh, it, we were not in a very professional environment as we are today. So it was very, uh, I can say tough, but uh, having that uh, title really goes a long way. Okay, uh, as we know, networking is essential in professional life. So how do you nurture your networking in professional life? Would you? Uh, I think be respectful and be kind to people is like the first thing. Because uh, I think a person will get to know if you're just approaching them for the sake of networking. But if you are respectful mm -hmm. towards people and uh, just know your way in terms of communicating with people and keeping the bond, I think it really helps. And yeah, networking is really essential, and not only in terms of getting into a job, but throughout your life, like you know, you always yeah. meet people, you know. So, uh, just a question: like you had many uh, friends and. People you would have known in college times. So, does it help now in your networks? Uh, yes, because uh, I remember I was uh, like everybody graduating. I was confused whether should I go and do a master's or whatever. And uh, I, 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 we have our alumni who are like in Chicago right now. And we, we like still, so there's like a fun side of it where, where they still send snaps of like what they're making for breakfast. But there's still my 2 a.m. text like, what should I do? And should I like go for masters or should I do whatsoever and what's happening in life and things like that. So I think it's both. It's professionally very helpful, but I think the people you meet along your life, you don't need to like really reach out to people and network. Yeah. I think what whoever you feel in life and I think I think the alumni club of IOIT and otherwise if you look, everybody's into different cities. A lot of people are in Australia going for masters every now and then. So I think if you just connect with the network that you have heard, I think it will help. Okay, um, as you are in a profession where uh, trends are upgrading day by day um, and how do you adapt these changes and how do you um, learn new technologies? So, would you like to tell something about that? Yeah, I think you really need to be interested first because uh, I, I think nobody can keep you uh, interested if you are not interested. So, be very, like love what you do. Because if you love what you do, only then you'll you like follow particular topics that you are like interested in. Don't go behind trends. Like if you like doing coding, it doesn't mean that you know you have to go to big data and AI. No matter how much the world changes, I think it always will need engineers. So it is very important that firstly you love and choose a subject that you want to do, and then keep yourself. I think everything else follows because I think. If you would love, like today we open our Instagram and search what Randy Singh is wearing, what, what is happening and things like that. Why? Yes. Because we are interested. And if we don't uh, really be interested or like if that subject does not attract us, nobody can really force you into it. Because if you see people with careers, whether in teaching, whether in uh, IT, like working, they're like 20 years. So 20 years, nobody can tell you to like learn a new technology every day or at least know about it. So yes. I think you have to be interested. Uh, so, how do you manage work-life balance while engaging in multiple projects and uh, interests? Okay, uh, so it's been uh, that generally, academically also, I now knows that I was more like of a co-curricular balance student. So, it's, it's always been that way and with uh, here, it gets a little tough if you're working every day. It gets a little tough if you're like working every day, but... Uh, I think there are weekends, you take time to sort of, I do a lot of volunteering activities and uh, I think it's giving back to the society and then you play a little bit of sports and read a little. Yeah, you talked about your volunteer work, so I would really like to ask, how do you integrate philanthropy into your career and your life? Yes. Like I said, it's about uh, giving back to the society, so the product that I'm leading is focused on digitalizing sustainability. Uh, today, like aircraft, and generally, we are faced with a lot of carbon footprint with each one of us. So it's very important that when when you become engineers or when you have like a specific technical ability, you're able to recognize world problems and digitalize into it. Because if we only make machines, I don't think it's like giving back to the world. So I think you need to pick a cause and choose. So sustainability for me is important, or the 
like senior citizens activities is important mm-hmm. or like meeting children at old or like orphan centers are important so i think you need to always give back to the society it's good you do all these things and uh, apart from your uh, professional uh, career what are the uh, some of your hobbies and passion that you would also follow and uh i love work uh, so actually i did like a few freelance things around uh, lifestyle and fashion and things like that so what makes it different is because even if i'm like looking to design a home i will still look at it with an engineering perspective or like a fashion or something like that so i think that gives me a little bit of interest because i look at things differently and uh, those are my hobbies i really love to the hobby how do you stay motivated I think uh, we we'll, uh, I think we would be denying ourselves if we say that it is everybody is at the top hundred energies every time. Yeah. We are not. Nobody yeah. is because there have been times I've walked into the office and people are like, "Muskan, how do you stay so energetic?" And that had been like I was really sick or I was low. Mm. So I think it just I wouldn't say fake it till you make it, but I think accepting that yes, we have to do it. We go for it and. I mean, you can take a great vacation later, but first five years you like really need to do it. And what about your experience that includes working with startups and established companies? So, what are the major differences you have noticed? Um, I think today the difference is vanished because a lot of companies uh, have functions and projects which support innovation a lot, and they support the startup mindset a lot. So, difference is vanished. but in startups i think your ability to self learn and explore is more because you don't have like defined project or like for the first internship that i did it was like a csr activity where i did everything from ui ux data pair designing the whole thing so i think the liberty gives you a lot to learn yeah so um, everyone has a mentor in their career so do you have any significant yes. me- mentor or anyone uh, who would you claim as a mentor who helped you in shaping your career uh i think it's difficult to name one yeah because uh, i have always been the one for conversations and advice so wherever i think i'm like a hungry learner so if I, because i remember it was my, uh fasal ka naam and one day i was like doing some tpo activity in her cabin we had like these uh, hours we could fill in and i was like uh, should we do something very technical or should i and she was like no mr when i was starting go into a core company and that stayed with me so it's like a core company and today also when i get options to switch between like a business development consultant or a developer i know i would like to stick with a developer so i think all of these things whether it comes to your parents or whatever it is really difficult to choose one person but people will guide you yeah So as a thought leader how do you stay informed about the latest industry trend trends and achievements uh, like we have discussed earlier we need to upgrade if we are not if interested but we need to upgrade so how you are updating yourself every day about the new trends in our profession your profession basically i think listen uh, in terms of uh, i didn't come from an aerospace background yeah. but uh, i was uh, there are colleagues in your company or there are people senior to you or there are people who have studied those particular subjects so i think it's pretty important to listen when they talk mm. and you can get a lot of information by reading one but you get a lot of information by being a part of discussion so i think socialize really like it's it's just been fancy today that you can stay at home and self care and all of that i think yeah you can do it good but you should go out there socialize meet people because that's going to give you real life experience so basically you have to come out of your comfort zone yes and yeah. like if you don't have the knowledge if you don't have the interest maybe you need somebody who does because there are a lot of people who are open to share and there are a lot of things available online okay so you know that uh, building a personal brand is very crucial so what strategies have you employed to do it uh, everybody is replaceable in today's IT industry mm-hmm. but i remember uh, with one of the discussions uh, because i was contributing to multiple roles uh, my manager who's also my friend he said that you can't how am i supposed to replace you i think that's the point that it comes in terms of uh, like you can have technologies or whatsoever but if if you're really 
learning new things, proving yourself every day. So I think the people accountable will know. I think that's your strategy to be like honest to yourself in terms of how you deliver your work, like with hundred percent sincerity. So like apart from your professional life, what is what is your hobbies? What do you indulge yourself other than your professional? Life? I like to like I am really fond of horses, so I like to do that. And uh, apart from that, I like to swim. And painting actually it's taken a little bit of setback in my life, but I would love to get back. Yeah. So um, you have accomplished a lot in your career. As there are any specific goals you still want to achieve, yes. everyone has a goal to achieve. So what are your prominent goals that you want to achieve in your career? Uh, like I said, uh, digitalizing a lot of uh, world problems okay. in terms of uh, and not like making it very traditional, making it very cool in terms of maybe gamifying apps. That was one of the patents we really filed recently in terms of having a very sensitive topic of the world but having a gamified approach to it. So I think uh, if I look at like a long-term vision, I think it would be that. Okay. So uh, talking about your professional life or personal life, you must have employed certain practices, ethics or values that uh, uh, helps you keep motivated or uh, work in a professional uh, life. So what are the steps that you follow to uh, employ them or to keep them in uh, your uh, pace? I think emotional intelligence, if uh, you all have heard the term, it's very important today uh, because the respect, the way you treat a task that comes to you, the way you deal with people, everything really revolves around that because today, if, I think everybody is efficient in technology, you can learn everything, you can have multiple certifications. So I think uh, ethics around the whole concept of emotional intelligence is really close to me. Yeah. So anyone, any questions? Actually, yes. The last question is that uh, apart from your long journey, uh, what advice do you want to give to youngsters and us? I think I'm still young. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, advice to all of us and what I remind myself every day is do not give up. Because uh, you do your 9 to 5, you come and there's like every day you would want to quit or you give like a paper and like COA or like I don't know if you have the subject but architecture based subject. And you would want to give up. There have been times like you don't want to do it, or you want to leave like a state. I think it's very fancy today to leave a stable career that people have and like go do something else. I think find the balance. Do this and do that. Do not give up just because you feel tired. Like stay motivated. Yeah. Anyone else? Any questions? Um. So can you share any uh, challenging situation at work and how you navigated through it, uh, leading to a positive outcome? Yep, I can. So um, it was because I had contributed uh, to a project, and uh, the the stakeholders found my ability to like look like I just the other day college I went from the project I'm deployed and uh, learning AWS was there and I was like a fresh grad so and AWS is like really complex. So I used to solve a problem sleep. I used to wake up like open my laptop and something had broken somewhere and not even because I had done it because some team had just done something different and I navigated myself through that and then there was uh, me leading a particular project and uh, agreed that I was like capable to do it but dealing with like a lot of people who are working so I think people management getting the things done yet being polite and kind and uh, still nailing like making sure you have like 100% first time right delivery was a challenge. And I think, again, emotional intelligence and your experience comes into it. So, uh, this is not a question, but uh, would you tell your college life in short? And are you still missing it? What parts of life are you missing? Yeah. Share memories. some experience, yeah. your memory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Teachers, teachers yeah. department, yeah. your friends. Uh, I think for all of my teachers, I mean, I have had significant memories, whether it was Sosri Ma'am, whether it was Mahali Ma'am, whether it was the HOD, whether it was TV project, whether it was the staff which was there. I remember uh, before before every practical, they used to like be doing things on the lab and like, you know, and we used to like be completely in stress. So I think with the department, it's been, everybody used to teach different subjects. Everybody had a different speciality and a different uh, thing to give. 
So with all of them, whether it's it is people who are not like a part of a department anymore and they've gone into significant things in their career, but I like I still have them on their WhatsApp contacts and things like that. So with the department is that. With the college, I think uh, if you talk about missing it, of course. We like the moment I came, I saw that Itsa logo and I sent it to the people yeah. who designed it because we didn't get our Itsa, we were the COVID batch. Yeah. And yes. it's the uh, alacrity because trust me, it gives you a lot of exposure. I remember we went to the military office to like negotiate and that was my first time negotiating a, a really big amount yeah. in terms of getting that sponsorship. So yeah. with the college, it was all of that. We used to like have different things. We had like a lot of fun, like sitting in that corridor, reading before the exam, waiting for our, yes. like mm-hmm. I have never made so many prayers in my life with, like before that uh, semester result is to come. <laughs> I was literally so superstitious. My first year teacher, I asked him to check my second year exam results because I'm like back up. And mashallah, touch wood, still touch wood, zero backlog. We did it. You, know. you were one night before person, right? In- no, I didn't oh, think so. Okay. You know, like we were like 15 years old, but I remember when we were in the corridor sitting, nobody had to disturb me. I, I, I used to be there with like a, a very good friend of mine. And only just to study, like that, that those few moments nobody had to disturb. Yeah. I think I have seen Muskan, she was very much uh, a top, a good student academically also. But apart from academics, she was very much active in curricular, extracurricular activities. And she has been telling you that uh, participating and being a volunteer in activities like Alacrity, it uh, gives you a lot of exposure, experience of dealing with the people in the industry as well as in the different campuses. So, uh, and she was very, very active in all these activities. And uh, with these activities, and I understand soft skills also play a very crucial role as you mentioned. It's not only technical skills. Grooming, your personality development, your soft skills are equally important. So, Muskan, what is the last, uh, I mean, the piece of advice you will give to your juniors in terms of all these areas other than academics? How this uh, soft skills or your uh, whatever CCRP we do for you, how that plays a, a role when you are out in the industry? True. Uh, so like you said, it's not about only your technique, it's about personality because when you walk into any space, a person comes. It Like you don't have a degree along with you or whatsoever. So technical skills, yes, but you are an engineer. An engineer is not only about knowing how to code or knowing a particular technology. It's about the application of it and it's about convincing that your way to do it is the best. And first of all, being confident that the way you have done it is very good. In terms of uh, like the CCRP programs today, the opportunities are like plenty. Even when I got into uh, my professional full-time career, we still like had two or three seasons. Of, uh, we call it the Aerophone. So it's like the hackathons that go in. And today also you still see people like AFM is participating into different uh, college hackathons. Yeah. And we, we, the, we like really bought a certificate from COAP home. So mm-hmm. all of these really matter in terms of, uh, because what happens, like nothing really changes in confidence, you, just that your textbook is taken out. Yes. It's, it's really the same, you still have hackathons, you still have everything. So if I think if the college is giving you opportunities, it's opening new branches up, nobody's ever telling you no in terms of exploring, in terms of going on and participating, paper publications, research, don't take it like you just have to do it, really do it. Because I, like for us, we developed a new algorithm uh, in, in the terms of COVID to like have a, like a crisis detection. It was based on the analyzed predict recommend model. And trust me, the industry that I'm working in, we like use data science algorithms. It's like a full fledged application that's worked around the same principle. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if you just take something from the internet, sum it up, paper and things like that. See, if you just do it, life will just do it to you. So if you like really sincerely do it, I think that's always like knowledge. My father always said knowledge will never go waste. You will always get something. Great. That was very great. Thank you. So yes, we are now at the end of the formal talk. So let's just start with uh, some fun activity. So we are going to have a rapid fire now. So let's start it. Okay. 
Okay. So, first question for you is, what's the most embarrassing thing that happened to you on campus? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, what happened to us on campus? We're going to rapid fire. All right. I, uh, so, actually, for ITSA, we always used to, like, buy a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it used to happen was, we uh, would uh, really have to close a lot of things. It used to be like a rigorous process. Sometimes it used to be like examinations next day. So remember we were drenched in rain and like had come to give the exams and we were still worried about where the ITSA material was. So it was like a hammock. Okay, ITSA was important. ITSA was important but yeah. the exams are very important. Yeah. <laughs> What's the craziest party you have ever been to in your college times? Craziest party I've ever been to in college times? I think uh, all of the Dania nights we used to have or anything we used to have, I think it's, it's, it's really crazy because there used to be a time when, you know, the whole staff faculty was there and uh, the alacrity that you, I don't know if you all still have Battle of Band, DJ yeah. Nine, yeah, 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 yeah. the O80 where we used to have like some stuff. I think they were crazy enough. I didn't have to go outside for party. <laughs> What's the most useless class you took? I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that, I'm not saying that. <laughs> okay, fine. So, what's the weirdest thing you saw in college library? Any of you? Sometimes, I, th I, I think uh, the infrastructure definitely improved and better right now. But sometimes when we used to be like, with a lot of submissions, the Wi-Fi didn't work and everybody used to sit outside, like the library, there was like a few benches. And everybody used to sit outside, everybody was mobbed, there was like one Xerox machine. Yeah. But I think engineering days, I don't think it was like uh, weird, but uh, engineering life. To be yes, yes. What's the biggest regret you have from your college? COVID. <laughs> COVID really took uh, our two years, but uh, I remember we still did a lot of things online. We had our convocation online, but I, if I always dreamt of being an engineer, I always dreamt of getting my degree, taking pictures, but it was nothing. I think COVID. Yeah, COVID badges, we're getting that. Most random thing you learned in your college? Most random thing I learned in my college? I don't know. Um, there was nothing random as such, but uh, I think uh, how to, like we learned all the bash commands. One day before practicals, we learned history so that was not a part of any slide. syllabus it was random it was, I think life so I was still that I learned what's one thing that you missed most about your college I think the ability to not care while taking decisions in terms of like if I have to take a class if I have to learn big data and AI I don't have to worry about like the financial aspects of it I don't have to worry about uh, because I still have to come to my college like for example in Bangalore it's famous about the traffic. Pune also has got a lot of traffic right now if you had to go somewhere else. So I think college, everything was available at one place, whether it was study, whether it was resources, whether it was anything. So I think that was pretty sorted. I think I missed that. So best piece of advice to your juniors, not in terms of uh, studying, any other? Live it. Like these four years are not going to come back. Yeah. Whether you, you want to be like a gold medalist, go ahead, shoot it. If you want to be like a top sports player, go ahead, shoot it. Because this is the time. Like you wouldn't get time to explore yourself, know yourself better other than these four years. Okay. What's the one thing that you're glad you left behind in college? Glad I left behind. Uh, going crazy on ship Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, <laughs> because uh, you go to different places and then you... Like you can just know that you can survive Shiv Jayanti without wearing orange, without like going, because we used to be like completely in college, we used to like go out for lunch and do a lot of things. So I think I'm glad uh, we left behind acting normal. Yeah, Shiv Jayanti is a great experience in our college. Shiv Jayanti is a great experience yes. in our college, don't miss it. Yeah. What's the most interesting project you have worked in your college times? In my college time, uh, the fourth year project, the final year project that we, we were doing, it was um, a machine learning model analysis predict recommend. So, for example, if you had to know when is going to be the next lockdown and what should uh, the clothing stores do 
are in person could tell you that and person okay. could recommend you what to do in terms of any other uh, and we had a team of four people it was my idea i remember calling uh, it holy ma'am and i i was telling her see i remember third year we have done something different in terms of the paper we submitted but i really want to do this she was like okay go ahead do you have sponsor so i um, there, there were a few people who were taking the big data and ai class then and they sponsored us and i'm like we are really doing it so i think that like if not only through my college but like throughout my career there are a few projects i was part of and proud of i think this was it okay that's really good to know about it so what's the most important thing you learned in college that you use in your in your career today engineering i mean you don't care what you're doing you don't care how much you know if you have to get the pass and marks you have to get the pass and marks if you have to need a practical you have to need a practical if you have to really tell a story in the viva you have to like no matter what situation you are in go and like conquer it and give your best is what i learned and will always say with me so uh, not in terms of studies but one of the biggest challenge you faced in your college and how did you overcome it i think adapting because i was from a junior college and like a zurasan school so it was very different i met a lot of people with different culture different state but i like i was born in bodap in pune so i was not like really exposed so it was coming out the excel for me so i think that was also a challenge or like a different experience i would say okay and what's one advice you would give to the students who are interested in your field of study were interested in my field of study <laughs> uh i think uh, not advices i i don't think uh, we are we, we like the generation to give and take advices but i think uh, like i said even if it, it doesn't matter you could be like a tennis player and have an engineering mindset engineering is not your job it's your mindset so i think mm-hmm. that's my advice so i nobody really has to tell you that you have to graduate out of iit and do something that is like a 95 job no you can be a startup owner you can be anything when you step out of your but have the engineering mindset okay yeah, it's fun knowing about you in this town and yes, so it is so let's end this rapid session here and let's move to our uh, word of thanks so yes uh, dear alumina association media committee and all the students on behalf of our institution i extend heartfelt gratitude to all for making this event a grand success special thanks to our esteemed speaker muskan for her enlightening uh, insights into remote work leadership your expertise has inspired us all to the principal and hod our constant support and guidance shape our institution's excellence the alumina association and the media committee thank you for your dedication in organizing this memorable event to our students your enthusiasm and presence have made the it truly special Let's embrace the knowledge gained and strive for greatness. Thank you all for your valuable time. Thank you.